Good morning, everyone. Glad you're here. Thank you for your patience. Want to let you know that Jeff's not here this morning, but we're still going to have church with Jeff preaching. We're going to find out how we did this. We're so happy you're here. Isn't that a beautiful picture with a leaf? Nice fall weather. Right in the middle of the leaf is a is a heart. I'm going to hold for just one minute. Good morning, everyone. The game, I'm so excited to be here this morning. Glad that you're all here with God. Good morning from Miami. Can you see the stadium there? It's going to be a game. Bill is with me. We're so excited to see you this morning. Remember, we're here to worship God and to see, listen to the, listen. Good to see Jeff on the video. Oh, everyone moved forward now. It's like everyone came forward, <laughs> moved to the front. That's pretty cute. So anyway, announcements. I have really just about one or two, uh, well, I guess three announcements. Shannon, do you have an announcement? Come on up. Hello, everyone. Good morning. This Friday, it's getting closer, this Friday is game night at 7.30. Please um, let us know if you want to come and join us. It's going to be a fan game night, kind of a Halloween theme or a fall theme, uh, those sorts of games. Um, we'll have some snacks and just a fun time, just time to share with each other. Uh, what do you plan to bring? Let us know if you're planning to bring anything. And um, maybe some bingo or games like that or different kinds of games. If you have any ideas, let me know of some games we could play. It'll be a fun night. See you there. If you have any questions, let me know. All right. Two announcements. I would like... Um, first uh, announcement is about uh, Wednesday midweek. If you'd like to help uh, serve or clean or prepare the food, if you're planning to do that, list your next month, November, uh, what's the date? Second, I think maybe? Uh, second or fifth, I can't remember. November 5th, I believe. Let me know if you want to help with that. Oh, Lynn says November 2nd. Okay, November 2nd. Let me know if you want to help with that. Um, another announcement uh, the women's retreat. I've seen some people sign up already, and thank you for that, who have already signed up. Thank you for that. Uh, more are coming. November 12th is the women's retreat. It's kind of an all-day, just a one-day retreat. Um, the committee will provide snacks and lunch, and the guest speaker will be Linda Thiessen. Um Stuart, she'll preach about, her, her topic will be, um, who, who is God? Kind of give you some ideas, make you think differently about who God could be. Or maybe you have some wrong ideas of who God is. So she'll talk about that. That will be her topic. Um, any questions? November 2nd is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
we, we announced November 2nd, but thank you for the reminder. I think that's all the announcements. All right. Okay, now, um, this will be a time for you to think about if you have any prayer requests, you can write them down, and uh, we'll pass around the uh, prayer request box. You can put them in there. Who's going to help us uh, pass around the box for today? Yeah, Shannon, you can help us. Thank you. time for our love offering it's it's an offering from your heart to give to God from your heart God knows your heart so now we're past the offering
it's time for our morning prayer together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for allowing Lynn to arrive safely, even though she was a little bit late. And thanks for Jeff being safe his, for his arrival in Miami. I hope they enjoy their whole day, whatever they're doing together. Keep them safe together. For everyone out there, keep everyone safe. Thank you for bringing the people here. And even though Jeff's not here, thank them, thank them for coming to worship you because we all love you. And we ask that you open our hearts and our minds and open our eyes so that we can take in what Jeff has to tell us today. For everything that you do, in Jesus' name, amen. Sign with me, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Excellent. Amen. <laughs> now for the word of God. Jeff's not here. How are we going to do this? He's at the football game with all the noise, the background. How are we going to do this? Ah, nope. Now we're going to watch Jeff. Jeff's sermon. Hello, hello. Good morning. Glad to see all you all here. Even though I'm not here, I am here with you in spirit. doesn't matter if you see me, my story, do you know where I am? Yep. Now, I'm, I'm happy to share with you so we can learn more from the Bible today. Are you ready for God's word? Ready? All of you? Ready? Really? Really? Are you really ready? Uh, or do you need a break? Which? <laughs> okay. Now, are we ready? I want to get your mind thinking about some things. All right, here we go. First picture. Let's take a look at that. People running. Um, okay, now, what, what do you see in that picture? What does that make you think of? Anyone? Running? A race? Said, saw number seven on there. Okay, yeah. Oh, number one's on there. The start of the race, the finish of a race. 
Competition for what? What's it for? Hmm. Running for a goal. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, ready for the second picture? Okay, so remember running for a race for a goal, and now the second picture. Okay, now, what did you see? A double me? No, 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 no. Yep, that was me. That's when I was coaching. I was a football coach. Yeah. I was a, I was coach. I was, I was teaching. Yeah, yeah. Telling me what to do. Yeah, that was me before when I was a coach. And now it's my turn to be your pastor. I'm, it's the same concept. I'm still teaching. Still teaching, teaching the Bible, telling you the plays that are in the Bible. And now the third picture. Let's see what we see. Now, hmm, what's that? A crown. It's a crown. I mean, what's that for? Do you have any ideas? A king, okay. Or a queen. I had the number of number of points that were on the crown. Well, there were seven there, okay. The crown is for what? Hmm. I'm curious. Okay, so for Jesus, okay, yeah, that's good. Okay, so now all of those three pictures together. We have the race, we have the coaching, and we have the crown. So we put those all together. What do you think the topic is today? What do you think? Any ideas? Give me your ideas. Discipline? Okay. Any more? Including Jesus and the Bible. Okay. All right, yep, that's fine. Good ideas. I hope you learn something and open up your eyes today. Are you ready? Did anyone guess the perfect topic? Now, I'm preaching about training or trying. Those two ideas. What does that have to do with coaching and a crown and a race? Let me give some, some background information first. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. We'll read those two slides together. know that in a race all the runners run but only one runner gets the prize so run like that run to win all who compete in the games use strict training they do this so that they can win a prize one that doesn't last but our prize is one that will last forever so I run like someone who has a goal I fight like a boxer who is hitting something, not just the air. It is my own body I fight to make it do what I want. I do this so that I won't miss getting the prize myself after telling others about it. Okay, so uh, now I'll, I'll sign it. First Corinthians chapter 9, 24 through 27. You know that in a race, we all follow, but only one gets the prize. 
We have to run like that. We have to run to win. We have to compete to win. All who compete in the game with strict training, we do that so we can win the prize. But it's a prize that doesn't last. But our prize is one that will last forever. So I run like someone who has a goal. I fight like a boxer, actually hitting something, not just the air. It is my own body. I fight to make it do what I want. I do this so that I won't, I won't miss the prize myself after telling others about it. Okay, so now training or trying? It doesn't matter. Both will help you get the prize. Did you see that interpretation? So that after you're working hard, we will have to work hard. We will have to work harder. We may have to serve others more. And by how people will perceive us, how people will look at us. We have to show we have to show him. We have to show God. We have to show Jesus to other people. We have to work. Remember last week, Cody? He was our he was our guest preacher. He said, we just can't sit back and do nothing. We have to work harder. We still have to work harder to get the prize. We have to keep trying. The Bible tells us in that, script, in that scripture It doesn't matter if you try harder to show something that I see you working. It doesn't matter if I see you doing it, but God knows your heart. So you keep trying. You can't just sit back and rest and do nothing. You have to keep training and training. Like to become a pastor or a coach I give information, I give instructions. You have to train your body, you have to work on, with your body. It doesn't matter that through training and wisdom, you'll take up those sorts of disciplines for him. It will help you receive his grace. Paul wrote in the book, 1 Corinthians, he was sent to the town of Corinth to help them solve some problems. He had to work hard helping them solve problems. The concept is the same as here. Our group here at church work together. So what is this church in hell about? Work, working together, training, keep other accountable, raise each other up as brothers and sisters in Christ. We train, we work together, we collaborate. Paul said, Listen, it, it's the truth. You, we must encourage one another. He was saying this to the people in Corinth. Run the things the way they should be. You'll get the prize. See, the verse says a prize. W what is that prize? What is the prize we receive? Heaven? Yes. 
You see that verse? That won't, the prize that won't last forever? The prize that goes away? Spiritual discipline. What is spiritual discipline? What do we do with spiritual discipline? It trains us to do what? An example, like prayer, is an example of a spiritual discipline. We're talking with God. We pray for other people. We care for other people. It, prayer is like, like a dialogue, like a discussion. Hey, God, help them. Help them. We pray before every meal. In our way that we talk with people and our missionaries or talk with Jesus. Reading the Bible is a, is a discipline. Like a playbook. I, you know, as a coach, I would give out the playbook. The same is true for the Bible. It tells us what to do and how. I see you training and trying and understanding better and better e each week. Honoring God. Maybe you're working and, and give it all up to God. But you're training to honor and praise God. Signing music. That's a, that's a spiritual discipline. Training. What does it require? Strict discipline. Everyday training. To run that race. But at the end, oh, you feel successful. But the goal is a crown to be successful. We're training here on earth. We're really here just for a short time on earth, right? We're training here on earth for what? To live forever in heaven. That is an amazing goal. We need to be ready. We need to plan and train in our spiritual disciplines. Like the verse we read. Some of you can memorize those verses. I mean, not all of it, but you can try. Memorize some of it. Maybe memorize your favorite verse. You can do that. Pray. Fast. We can fast. We can pray to God during some quiet time, during our solitude. Simple living. Like... What does that mean for simple living? All you need is food and clothing, a house, a way to travel from place to place. That's simple living. Worship here at church. Hospitality means to bring people in, feed them, give them what they need. And service. Serve and help other people. doesn't matter we train and we plan just just for yourself God knows so train on your spiritual disciplines that power can change you and people will see that change in you and they'll see God in you. Like a long time ago when I was, um, Tom Landry was a famous uh, football coach. A Dallas Cowboys coach. He, was a, he himself was a really strong Christian. 
And he said, he was known for his um, fedora hat that he wore everywhere. And he said, my job is to get you to do what you don't want to do. For example, running and running and running. I was just so exhausted or, or punishing them for something. Just continue that training so that that training will help you be the person that you want to be. And that proved he, he won so many Super Bowls. That was a life goal for eternity. Like that second picture when you saw me as a coach. That was high school. But it was actually training me to, to teach you and be your pastor. So going from coach to training you individually to help you grow in your spiritual lives. For what? For eternal life. Now with this, I want to show you another example. Use those uh, yellow highlights on the scriptures. The first one I want to show you is verse 25. It says, All who compete in the games use strict training. And they do this so they can win a prize. But it's a prize that doesn't last. But our prize is one that will last forever. What is that prize? Our crown of glory in heaven from God. That should tell you something. The one that lasts forever, it just lasts and lasts. I mean, sometimes here on earth, we win a prize, we get it, we feel it's just so temporary. We get that prize and it's like temporary. But the one from God just lasts and lasts and lasts forever. It's clear. We have to train and plan for eternity to receive that prize from God. Oh, we just can't hang out and do nothing. We can't. We have to work. We have to train. We have to work harder. We have to tell other people about Jesus. And you have to kind of like risk your life in the same way. Jesus warned us that we will be watched and we can, could be persecuted for our beliefs. But don't worry about that. Your pray, prize will be in heaven. We have to keep training until we finish our time here on earth. Now, I want to show you another verse highlighted. Verse 27. That it is my own body that I make it do what I want. I do, I do this so I won't miss the prize for myself, the prize that I tell others about. If you want, want the prize, you have to show others how to do it. I know it's difficult sometimes. How do we do this? We, we're not sure what to do, but we have to plan. We have to know exactly what to do, and we do that. You learn that through your spiritual disciplines. 
like I'm here in preaching or coaching, helping you, helping other people, helping you study and learn and read and try and memorize and discuss to try to tell other people. You can't use up your body here on earth. Jesus died on the cross. For, for what? For our sins. So we have to give up our bodies to face our enemies. Or you know, people who don't care, who want to discard us. We have to stand strong for, for who? For Jesus. Now I want to show you, in the same book, there's another verse. I'm going to show you this. Now, you see it's in the same book that Paul wrote. For, it's in First Corinthians. Chapter 10, verse 31. He says, So if you eat, or if you drink, or if you do anything, do it for the glory of God. That means you are do everything for him. It's like, it's just basic what it says. So if you eat, like morning prayers, eat dinner, eat, pray before you eat dinner, then you eat. You thank God that it's giving you strength. Or if you drink anything, take medicine, you know, with some water, you should pray then too. Strengthen us, give us health. Now, if you do anything, it says, that, it plays, uh, that applies to the instructions, to, to the training to disciplining yourself in spiritual disciplines. Do everything. The verses that you read when you're reading the Bible, memorize them. Pray for other people. Care for other people. That will praise God. Like it says, for the glory of God. Which means you can glorify God and give thanks in your singing. When you do that, you honor him. Like when you say the Lord's Prayer, that glorifies God. Discipline yourself to memorizing scriptures. You have to keep remembering Jesus in everything you do. Always give glory to God. Just like in a game, you know, the players are running to get a touchdown. Often they'll point up to the sky. They're, they're saying thank you to God. Have you noticed that? Like you'll see that sometimes on TV. I hope some of the players will talk about it afterwards. Like, ah, they give glory to God. That, that's thrilling when that happens. It's fun to see. Now I want to show you another picture, another slide. I found another picture that really applies to, to the scriptures. Did you see that? See that picture? It says, honor the game. Honor Christ. And then down below it says, 
It's First Corinthians. Ten, same one we just talked about. Ten thirty one, do everything for the glory of and honor of Christ. Like now, I'm at the game. Keep me safe. Bring me back home to see you next week. Part of the game is here, too, here on earth. But still we have to prepare for eternity in heaven. It will be different. It will be thrilling. Give glory to him. Honor him. Now again, I want to remind all of you of the spiritual disciplines. We'll train you to be better. We're going to pl- train you for an e- life in eternity. In everything that we do. Right? God bless you. And I know I will be back here next week with all of you. In person. Back to you. Hello, good morning. We have questions. We're going to start with this one. Is it true or false that all Christian virtues are gifts of the Holy Spirit? True or false? What do you think? True, true. I'm not sure about the virtues myself, but um, who says it? Who thinks it's true? Who says false? Let's look and see the answer. It's true. It says, the book of James, chapter 1, verse 17, says, Every good thing comes from God. Every perfect gift is from him. These good gifts come down from the Father who made all things in the sky. But God never changes like the shadows from those lights. He is always the same. And the next question. Is it true or false? James, the author of uh, the words... We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So is James the author of those words? Who says true? It's really quiet in here. Hmm, Not sure? All right, that's fine. Let's look at the answer. It's false. Paul, not James, wrote those words. Paul wrote those. In Romans 8, 28, he wrote, Everything works to the get together for the good, for those who love God. Those people God chose because that was his plan. Paul wrote that. <laughs> All right, and the last question. Is it true or false that Christ's second coming was foretold by the angels of heaven? Who thinks true? Who thinks false? Who's not sure? (laughs) That's fine. It's true. In Acts chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, It says, they were staring into the sky where he had gone. Suddenly, 
two men wearing white clothes were standing beside them. They said, Men from Galilee, why are you standing here looking into the sky? You saw Jesus carried away from you into heaven. He will come back in the same way that you saw him go. Amen? Amen. Okay, now for some cute pictures. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Dennis told me, I need a new crown. I was like, I know, right? <laughs> Do you understand? Jesus Christ, hide-and-seek champion. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense to some. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, Jesus never hides, someone says. That's right. That's right. It's just a joke. 33 A.D. to present time. Oh, dolphins. <laughs> like dolphins. Those bananas look like dolphins. They're kind of like in the ocean. Yeah. It's just to, just just to make you smile. Looks like little dolphins in the ocean. Yeah, because of the dolphins football game. Okay. Let's let's say the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God go before you to guide you. May he go behind you to encourage you. May he go with you to be a friend and be above you to watch over you and within you to give you peace. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you do here on earth. You protect all of us in our travels, especially the few peoples that are traveling now, especially Bill and Jeff. Bring them back to us safely. Watch over them. And thank you for the sermon today that explains how the game that we're playing is for a crown in heaven and we can tell others about Jesus and that we will receive that prize in heaven from you. So now go with each and one of us. Keep them safe as they go home and keep them safe for the week. And teach them what you want them to learn from today's lesson. Help them think more about it and how we can look to you and honor you. Thank you for everything that you have done. And thank you for Jesus, for your love. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you. May God bless you. You. Bless all of you always.